Christian Parenting. Welcome to the Moms in Prayer podcast, a place where we are encouraged and equipped as moms so we can better pray for and impact the next generation. Our heart's desire is for every school in every nation all around the world to be covered in prayer. We're so thankful you joined us today. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm your host, Aubrey Hoover. Did you know we actually have another podcast called the Moms in Prayer Training Channel? If you're a new group leader or if you're considering starting a group, or maybe you just want to learn more about the ministry, this is a great place to learn. All the episodes are 15 minutes or less, so it's quick and simple. And we have all sorts of episodes on the four steps of prayer, on starting a group, on our prayer sheets, on how to grow and sustain your group, on homeschool groups, and everything in between. So you can check that out by just typing in Moms and Prayer Training Channel wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can go to the link in our show notes. And I know as parents, we are always looking for quality tools and resources to help our kids develop a relationship with the Lord. And this is why Christian Parenting is so excited for you to get your hands on a new devotional journal made just for kids ages 6 to 12 called My Time with God. Your kids will use this colorful and fun devotional to read scripture, engage in creative activities, deepen their prayer life, and learn the benefits of spending time with God every day. Over 20 days, your kids will gain a solid understanding of Christian principles like What is prayer? Why spend time with God? Who is the Holy Spirit? And more. We all want our kids to grow up with a desire to spend time with God and be in His Word every day. But we also know that being consistent can be really difficult. So don't miss out on this opportunity to help growing believers learn how to connect more deeply with God. For more information and to get a copy of My Time with God for your kids, head over to cpgive.org. That's cpgive.org. And for today, we continue in our series, How Great Is Our God? And we get to hear from our Moms in Prayer Arkansas State Coordinator, Debbie Strobel. She shares how God has been a constant comforter and provider for her throughout her life, but especially during these last two years as she's faced great loss. She reminds us of the importance of knowing who our God is and clinging to Him through it all. So let's get into it. Welcome with me, Debbie Strobel. Hi, Debbie. Welcome on. How are you? Thank you. Glad to be here. We are happy to have you on, and we would just love for you to start off by sharing a bit about yourself, your family, and where you're from. Okay, be glad to. I uh, I was born and raised in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, and I was the youngest of three children. My parents were in their early 40s when I was born, and and that's not so unusual now, but back then that was pretty radical. (laughs) Uh, My family was just really wonderful, loving family. They believed in God. They believed in the Bible, but they didn't really make church attendance a priority, and I just really didn't understand how to know God personally. So I just kind of in my own mind thought it was about good works that if I was just a good little girl and there'd be better, more good works and bad works that God would let me into heaven. But what was uh, interesting was that even at, at as a young child, I would realize I couldn't be perfect. I would make mistakes and I would do things wrong. So I didn't really have a solution, at least not until I got into high school. And then something wonderful happened and it was called the Jesus Revolution. And in the early 70s and uh, at my high school, it was definitely happening there. I saw friends, saw people there who just had a different kind of relationship with God. And I wanted to know more about it. And as I spoke to them, and especially my best friend, Lisa, who helped uh, share with me and others, uh, I learned that, you know, I couldn't be good enough for God. That would I would never get to God that way. And that's why Jesus had to die for us. And if I just uh, trusted in him for my salvation and asked him into my heart that I would be saved. And I did that. And uh, there was a huge change in my life at that point. I even began to go to church totally on my own, found a church of my own and began to get discipled. And at that time, I like to kind of tell people that it was sort of the best time in my life and also the worst time in my life in many ways, because something pretty serious happened at that time, too. When I was 16, my mom pulled me aside and told me that my father was going to be forced to retire from work because he was making too many uh, mistakes at work. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know at the time what that was. But looking back, 
you know, we can know now that it was early onset of Alzheimer's because he was only in his 50s at that time. I just don't think I ever could have gotten through this time in, uh, in my life without the Lord. And so despite my father having to retire and losing his income, God just provided funds for me to attend college in a totally miraculous way. And that's a totally different story. <laughs> so I did get to go to Auburn. And before classes even began, I met a very handsome young man named Michael Strobel. And we ended up dating all four years. And then we got married uh, after graduation in 1977. So we moved around uh, Texas a few years and finally got settled in North Little Rock in 1981. So we just settled into our jobs and our hobbies. But we delayed having kids, basically because Michael was really terrified of being the <laughs> father. But finally, at age 34... Our first son, Preston, was born, and then five years later, uh, Grant was born when we were 39. And of course, Michael was a wonderful father. Mm. I love just hearing that whole overview of your life and just hearing God's grace and mercy, how that was so evident in your life and how he continues to show that to you even now. You are also our Moms and Prayer State Coordinator for Arkansas. So can you share your Moms and Prayer journey with us, how this all began? Of course. Well, I first heard about Moms and a Prayer in 2003, and it was just at a very critical time uh, in my kids' lives. Both boys had been in private school, but my oldest son, Preston, had aged out as it only went through eighth grade. And his desire was he wanted to go to public school in North Little Rock. But because of the distance between the schools, we knew we'd have to bring them both over, even though Grant really did not want to change. <laughs> and right at that time, a friend from church mentioned Moms in Prayer, and I knew I really needed prayer support for them. You know, I'd always been interested in prayer, but I soon realized that, uh, well, I was pretty much in kindergarten as far as prayer was concerned. <laughs> so I truly learned how to pray in Moms in Prayer, that there was so much more to it than just asking for things. I learned about God's character through his attributes, and it greatly deepened my faith. Mm -hmm. And God worked miracles that first year in my boys' lives. Even though they were transitioning to huge public schools, it all went well. And after a couple of years as a member, I became a group leader. And then a few years later, I took over the area coordinator position for North Little Rock. And then finally, in 2010, I became the state coordinator when our state coordinator moved into the district coordinator position. So we prayed our children through college. Uh, we prayed them into marriages with wonderful, believing women. And my husband, Michael, was just incredibly supportive. He helped in the ministry in any way that he could. Mm -hmm. But on December 10th, 2021, he suffered a totally unexpected and deadly heart attack when we were at our lake cabin. And I held his hand praying as he passed from this life to heaven. And I knew that I would need to depend on my faith and everything that I'd learned about the character of God to carry on. Mm -hmm. It's been cool to be able to watch you during this time and to see you when we get to see you once a year when we gather all the state coordinators and division coordinators together and just the grace and strength that you've shown. And now hearing your story of you growing up and how God has shown such grace to you, it's just cool to see now this tie in of the grace he continues to show you and the grace that you continue to walk in and the strength you walk in. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for continuing on despite the circumstances. And you shared that not only did Moms in Prayer help deepen your faith, but I know this time has deepened your faith and shown you more of his character, right? So today we are going to dive into a couple attributes of God. So can you share what those attributes are that we'll be talking about? Certainly. And these are certainly attributes that he's shown to me through my whole life, even before I even knew him. But uh, I'm going to share that he's been both my comforter and my provider, and how he's especially been that in these almost uh, two years now. So good. Yeah. So first, let's talk about he's my comforter. You know, we always do a definition in Moms in Prayer. So the definition is one who consoles, reassures, helps, and assists. And I'd like to share with you several ways that he's comforted me, and I hope that they'll resonate with our listeners also. Well, first, he comforted me through his word. After I realized that Michael was gone, in that very moment, the Lord spoke Job 13, 15 to me, which says, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. And I immediately knew I had to rephrase that to though you slay Michael, yet will I trust in you. I had to make that decision at that moment as to whether I would trust in God 
and his character and all that I knew about him, despite the situation. And I did confirm to him, I will trust you. Mm, That's so good because it's so important. We have to cling to his word. We have to cling to the truth in these hard circumstances and situations, especially when they don't make sense to us. It's so important that we're clinging to his truth. So how else has he comforted you? Well, I'd say he certainly comforted me through his presence. In 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. That's just verses I've really clung to. And I knew that God was with me through the presence of his Holy Spirit. And the word used in the Bible for the Spirit is parakletos, which literally means call to one side or to one's aid. And it is interpreted differently in different Bible translations, but one of those interpretations is comforter. So through the Spirit, he was with me to give me peace and to remind me of his character and of his word. Mm-hmm. Are you so thankful for his presence that we can know that he never leaves us or forsakes us? He is always with us. We have the Holy Spirit living inside of us as believers and just what comfort that brings that he goes before us and he is with us. Yeah. So how else have you seen God as your comforter? Well, he certainly also comforted me through his people. And there are once again, many examples of scripture where God brings comfort in human form. For example, Second Corinthians 7, 6 says, but God who comforts the downcast comforted us of the coming of Titus. So he used Titus there. And in that same way, God used so many believers to bring me comfort. We had just changed churches about nine months before Michael died. And God knew that the Summit Church was exactly where we needed to be when this happened. My pastors and my small group all rallied around me. And of course, my moms and prayer sisters from literally all over the country supported me. Women from around the state and even the region came to Michael's service. And I received cards from every state coordinator and staff member, as well as some group members who had heard. And I've saved every single one of them. They're precious to me. Mm, That's so sweet. So thankful for the body of Christ that God doesn't just comfort us in one way, but he gives many ways that he comforts us in various ways and areas of our lives. And Not only have you seen God as your comforter, but you said you've also seen him as your provider. Can you share about that too? Sure. Once again, the definition provider, one who equips, furnishes, or supplies what is needed. And I want to add one thing to that definition. He provides it when it is needed also. Mm -hmm. God is first called Jehovah Jireh in Genesis 22, where he called Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, but then stops him and provides a ram instead. Verse 14 says, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. And also in Philippians 4, 19, he promises, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So once again, there's several ways God provided for me. First, he provided companionship. In scripture, we see how God provided companions for Paul to do ministry with. In Acts 13, it was Barnabas, and later it was Silas. I definitely needed provision in that area. I'd lost my husband of 44 years, who I'd actually known for 48 years. It was lonely in our house as the kids all lived out of town. And just a couple of months before Michael died, I'd lost my dog Lexi at age 16. And she and I had just done everything together. We walked, ran each morning. We did uh, agility competitions. We did therapy dog work. So that was a big loss too. So a friend of mine who's in animal rescue encouraged me to check out a stray that she had found. And I had not thought about getting a dog at that point at all, (laughs) but God knew that I needed that companionship. Mm -hmm. So uh, Suni Lee, my little Arkansas brown dog, as I like to call her, uh, came into my life and God knew that I needed help to fill that emptiness left by the loss of Michael. Uh, Also, God encouraged me uh, to get more involved with the women in my church. Uh, that provided a lot of companionship also. So now I co-lead a Bible study group. And in several different areas, he's brought new friends and new activities into my life these past two years. Hmm. That's amazing. And I love the verse that you shared, Philippians 4, 19, that God supplies all your needs. I love that word, all. That's not just some of them, but it's all our needs. 
And also that you brought in Abraham because it's always so cool to see how, you know, God was providing for Abraham way back then, but how he continues to be our provider even now. So that is just amazing to think about how he never changes. He continues to be our provider. So keep going, keep sharing. Debbie. Okay. <laughs> well, um, one very important way is he provided from my financial needs. Of course, he promises that in Matthew 6, 25 to 33. There he tells us that if we seek his kingdom and his righteousness, he will give mm-hmm. us all of the physical things that we need as well. And my husband, Michael, had been a very financially responsible person. He never let us get to debt or live beyond our means. And a few years uh, before Michael died, my brother had passed away and left me as the executor of his estate because he had no wife or children. But fortunately, my brother had done no estate planning, and it was just incredibly difficult for me to sort everything out. And it took a very long time. And because of that situation, Michael immediately began to make sure that that didn't happen to us. Mm -hmm. So after Michael did pass away, everything was set and in place. And all I had to do was sign a few papers. And that's a situation that could have caused so much stress if it had not been taken care of earlier. I love that. That's just a God showing one of Michael's strengths that he had given him that now Mm -hmm. God is continuing to bless you with even now. So. That is so fun to see. Are there any other ways that God has provided for you in this time? Well, I'd also just say that he's provided me with a purpose. I know that I've been called to ministry with women. I think I've I've always known that since I became a believer. I know I'm called to share moms in prayer with ladies so that they can learn more about prayer and find the support and the joy that comes from praying with other women. And I've also been called to lead women at my church and studying the Bible and learning about prayer. I feel now that I've also been called to minister to other widows and to share the things that God has taught me through this. And just looking again at that verse from 2 Corinthians, he comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So I've been given comfort so that I can in turn comfort others. Yes, I love that. Thank you for being obedient in that. That is what God instructs us to do, to not just stay in that hurt or that difficulty, those troubles, but to receive that comfort from God. And then we can share that hope and that peace and that joy that is found in our Lord. So thank you for being an example of that and being obedient to that. So, oh, this has been so good to just remind us that God is our provider. He is our comforter, even in the hardest circumstances. So do you have any other encouragement that you want to share with the listeners? Well, I'd just like to say, you know, when we look to God as our comforter and provider, we're often doing it because there is a great need, perhaps. Maybe it's not the loss of a spouse like me, but it might be another kind of loss or a financial setback or even a serious illness. And when these things happen, we're always tempted to ask that one question, why? Mm -hmm. But instead of asking why, try asking what and how. What Mm -hmm. is God doing through these circumstances? And how is he going to be glorified through this? Hmm. Because that shifts the focus from my plan to God's plan, which is always the best one. Mm. Mm. That is so good. Yes. Asking the right questions and recentering our focus on him and how we can, like you said before, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, keeping that as the focus and focusing on glorifying him instead of ourselves. That is such a good reminder. Thank you so much, Debbie, for encouraging us, for setting our minds on God and who he is. So would you mind praying for our listeners? Of course, I'd be glad to. Father, we do praise you as our comforter and our provider. Thank you for showing these attributes so clearly in my life. And I pray for all those listening who need your comfort and your provision. I know that you will come alongside them to meet their needs through the Holy Spirit and through the people of God. Thank you that you can take any situation and use it for good and to bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Luke 12, 24 to 32 says, Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn. And yet, God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than birds? And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. 
They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek His kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We don't have to worry about anything, because God, our provider and our comforter, takes care of it all. Be sure to check out our training channel podcast through the link in our show notes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want to pick up that new devotional journal, you can find that at cpgive.org. And if you want to help spread this podcast, you can rate and review us wherever you're listening from. Always remember, God is your comforter and provider. See you next week.